Welcome to the Maneuver Meta, where I, and sometimes Paul, discuss the evolving meta in Flames of War version 4 Late War. I'm Lexi, and I've been playing Flames of War on and off for around 11 years. While I've played on and off, I've continually collected a large German, American, and Soviet armies. At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, I dragged my roommate Paul kicking and screaming into the Flames of War community. So let's declare our stance to maneuver and ready our reserves. Alright, hello there everybody. Welcome to episode 2 of the Maneuver Meta. Uh, today I'm going to be going over British list options. I'm going to be trying to take this uh, recording in one take as well. Try and make it a little bit more fluid than my German one. See how, see how that goes. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think of this. So as I said today, we're going to be looking at D-Day British lists and their use slash viability in the meta. Uh, D-Day British is the uh, only late war book out for them now, besides Fortress Europe, but it's, uh, it's a pretty nasty little book. Uh, but before I dive into that, I'm going to do a little overview real quick on what I deem as meta. And as always, feel free to pop down in the comments, disagree with me, agree with me, talk to me. I want, I want feedback on this because I'm not right on everything, guys. Especially considering that I've only played on and off. This is just an outsider's view looking at. So my view of the meta is that everything is being built against the 116th Greyhound pack front list that my first episode was about. The viability of the meta currently in version 4 is how well you can handle the Armored Panzer Grenadier pack front lists. And with that, the British Army book has multiple options that you can field that are, on paper, relatively effective against the 116th pack front. Now granted, this is a game of chance and probability with dice, but when matching things up, there are direct counters that make things statistically easier to use to kill things. But for me to go in further with that, I need to uh, give a quick recap on what of what I view as meta, my, my judging criteria, so to speak, on what is making a unit list or book meta competitive. So there are three things I've been using. I think I only did two last time, but I added a third this time. Uh, so the first thing is a four plus hit on rating. That careful hit on rating means that your teams are getting hit half as many times as the aggressive hit on rating under combat conditions, which I'm counting as a plus two to hit. So the four becomes a six, the three becomes a five. Uh, and pardon the sniffles, I'm a little, con a little congested fighting a cold right now. Uh, the other uh, thing that I look at the meta is if there's a discounted or cheap infantry option. Presence of discounted infantry allows you to hold your backline objectives preventing reconnaissance flanking in to take an objective. They're not having to go that far. They're not having to move. They're not necessarily having to assault. All that they are really doing is plopping down on the objective and digging in. You know, taking rounds of artillery bombardments, making it so that your opponent does not have an easy win. And then the third one that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on right now, because I uh, didn't go over it that much on episode one, is a is uh, access to cheap AT-14 ratings. And so the availability of AT-14 to both the 116th Greyhound list and D-Day British lists has affected the meta in a strange roundabout way. With this AT-14 spam capability for the Germans with the pack front 88s that are, I'll argue, are always going to be present in the list because of how survivable they are, and then the capability for them to take Tigers or Ferdinands or heck, even even Panthers, that that level of AT-14 present in the list means that you're going to usually have at least six AT-14 guns minimum. And then the British, I'll go into a little bit of detailing on, they have the capability to put some AT-14 in the list pretty cheap as well to get eight shots or even 16 shots. And what that does to the meta environment is it's made medium tanks not that good. They're a little bit overpriced for what they do. And so what ends up happening is, is medium tanks fall out of the meta 
and you start seeing light tanks and armored cars cropping in. So the reasoning behind this is the average front armor for a medium tank in late war is 6. AT-14 means they don't get a save even at long range. Gun rolls to hit, then rolls its 3, three plus firepower. Uh, this puts players and list builders into a situation where you end up asking yourself, why am I spending 12 points for a platoon of 3 Shermans that get no save against AT-14 when I can spend roughly the same amount of points for a platoon of 5 Stuarts? So you're getting more bodies on the table. Yes, the main gun isn't as good, but the bodies on the table is more impactful than the three Shermans. And then the other thing that AT-14, especially an abundance of it does, and why you need to run it, is you have the capability to deal with heavy armor. The majority of heavy armor comes in somewhere between front armor 8 and front armor 10. AT-14 still deals a solid chance at doing something to them, especially when you're able to focus fire from multiple units. For example, one of the lists I've been toying around with has three Tigers and four pack fronts. If all of those are on the table, that's going to be 14 AT-14 shots. That's going to mess up even a unit of three Churchills. And granted, with reserves, the Tigers aren't always going to be on the table at the same time as the 88s, but even eight shots against a platoon of three Churchills at AT-14, that's some withering fire for them to have to hold. And then one of the other things in terms of a reactive meta in response to the pack front is meta lists have to be bringing a way to deal with pack front. Be it brutal for the reroll, auto firepower checks, something along those lines that makes it so that they can deal with pack front. There's no denying it. Pack front is extremely powerful. And odds are, if you're running into a German player in the tournament setting, you're going to run into pack front 88s. There, there is no reason for a German player to not be running those. The only downside I can think of to pack front is that they cannot hold an objective or contest an objective. But the capability for them to be completely split up and then just the pure survivability of the re-rolling the firepowers and always being concealed is just... It is so good, especially for a gun like an 88 with that 40-inch range. So those are the things that I look at when considering if a formation, unit, book, whatever it is I'm looking at when list building, to deem if it's going to be meta uh, competitive. Until 116th gets dealt with, I'm going to continue the argument that the meta is reactive. Your list needs to be able to deal with 116th. If it can't deal with 116th, you're, you're going to not have a very good time at a tournament unless, unless you're just going to have fun. Which, of course, if you're going to have fun, that's perfectly fine. But if you're looking at the competitive edge to try and bring a list to a table that gives you a better hand to play against an opponent with, you're going to need some way to deal with 116th. So I'll be looking at the British forces out of D-Day British. It's a little bit difficult for me because I don't play British. A uh, acquaintance of mine plays British, and Paul has been looking at British as an army to start up. And uh, all the experience I really have with them is looking at the stats and comparing it to relative things in my head with armies that I've played. So the neat thing with the D-Day British book when I was going through it is they don't have a standout formation or card like 116th pack front combo. The thing with the British that makes them meta competitive in my mind is their support options. They are extremely flexible in list building. Long term meta compatibility for British is looking really good because there isn't one specific instance in the British of yes this is overpowered, we need to do something about this, we need to nerf this, we need to do something about it. There isn't really much Battlefront can do to D-Day British to knock them down a tier because while nothing is absolutely stand out, there's nothing really underwhelming either. So I'm going to be looking at a couple of uh, formations here, the two formations of that book that stood out to me were the Desert Rats Infantry and the Churchill armored uh, formation. Blanking on the exact terminology, please forgive me. Uh, so, starting with the Desert Rat Infantry, to make a uh, long story short, compiling it in really quick, 
and how they fit into the meta. They're discounted, and they have the 4 plus careful rating. That, that makes it so that you can plop them on your objectives, taking them as a formation, even if it's bare minimum, bare minimum of the two black box platoons in the HQ, then also adds that layer of uh, table security and not being formation broke if you lose your attacking force. But going into a little bit further detail as I dove into the book, uh, they're reluctant, which is iffy, but that's really only affecting their last stand and follow me rolls because their counterattack is a 4+. plus. So while not fantastic, it's not that bad either. The reluctant last stand is going to be a little bit obnoxious to deal with as if you're playing British, but similar to the 116th card, a 5 plus last stand for infantry is not that much of a downside. The other big negative with them is they only have the single Piat team, which unlike a Panzerfaust, is its own stand. So once that gets targeted and taken out, heavy armor can just roll into this infantry and then it turns into a game of uh, whoever fails their counterattack first. Which with a counterattack 4+, plus, again, it's not good, but it's not bad either. So the thing with the Desert Rat infantry from what I've, what I've gathered is you are using them to hold your objective or do a, some sort of flanking maneuver through cover. I personally would be plopping them on my objectives, getting them dug in. So the Desert Rats infantry comes in two formations, motor and rifle. The base difference between these is the motor company has less overall gray box options and smaller units. The rifle company has more gray box selection options and larger units. This is nice because options are fantastic. Going back to one of my uh, earlier points that the D-Day British is going to be long-term meta-compatible because you have those options. If you want to run skeletal platoons, bare minimum, so that you just have the smallest amount of points going into holding your backline objective, you can do that. If you want to beef out your infantry list to have more options, universal carriers, mortars, anti-tank guns, all of those neat, juicy things that you can take, you can take a rifle company with larger platoons, more infantry stands. Again, the only negative being you can't get more than one Piat anti-tank rifle team per platoon. But it is really neat to have those options. You can really conform a list to the playstyle that you're looking for. So the Desert Rats, again, I'm, they seem pretty solid to me. It's options. And... They fulfill the uh, the two main categories for infantry when I look at for the meta, that 4-plus hit-on rating and that that uh, discounted because of the bad motivation in this instance. So next formation that I'm going to be looking at is Churchill's. So it's no secret that Churchill's are good. Similar to Pack Front, where if you go to a tournament, you're going to see Pack Front. If you go to a tournament, you're going to see Churchill's. Now, granted, they are not always going to be British Churchills because the Soviets out of Fortress Europe have a very good Lend-Lease Churchill formation that I'll be doing an episode on when I go through Soviets. But the British ones aren't that bad either. Throw 20 points into your list. That nets you three Churchills, one of them being front armor 11, one of them being front armor 11, pardon my stutter there, and two with front armor 9. They have two 75mm guns, the 75mm on the Sherman, so they have that smoke option, and you can swap a uh, the third slot with a 6-pounder for a little bit higher anti-tank, or keep it as a 75mm for uh, the smoke option. They have 3-plus remount and counter-attack ratings, and they have a 3-plus to hit an assault because they're assault tanks. That top armor 2 with them being a heavy tank makes them a nightmare to deal with in close combat. You focus down your opponent's anti-tank sections, and then you just roll the Churchills forward. And so that is one of the negatives with the Churchills. They only have that tactical 8. They move at infantry speed, which is kind of nice if you're trying to work them with some motor infantry or some Desert Rats infantry, but you can't really pull the quick flanking maneuver some armies some other armies are capable of with these. 
So the formation is pretty basic. You have your uh, mandatory HQ, which isn't just one Churchill. You can take up to three Churchills in your HQ slot, which is really neat. Uh, then you have two black box Churchill armored troop units, and then your optional gray are adding up to three additional Churchill troops, a Stuart Reconnaissance, and a Crusader, uh, Crusader AA troop. So 20 points for three tanks makes it break down to about six and a half points per tank. Which might sound like a lot, but that's about the same cost as a T-3485. So for about the same points as a T-3485, you get the capability to deal with the, uh, the Flak 88s and AT-14. So the Churchills for the British are solid. And everything for the British, too, is a careful, careful hit-on rating. I uh, forgot to mention that with the Churchills. Um, they're, they're just a fantastic core unit that you can use to try and crawl up the table. And that's what Churchills do. They crawl. They're slow, but man, does it take a lot to deal with them. Uh, but the main reason behind the British meta capability that I encountered was their support diagram. Oh man, let me tell you, as Americans being my main allied force for the Western Front. I definitely get some jealous vibes looking at the British support options because, man, there is so much good stuff in that support diagram. I'm only going to be focusing on two today because, again, I'm rea uh, reactionary meta to the 116th Greyhound and the, uh, the other uh, priorities that I look at for meta. The first one I'm going to look at are the crocodiles. These are front armor 11 Churchills with flamethrowers that still maintain their main battery for, for uh, smoke rounds. 21 points gets you three of them. And their flamethrower is range six with six shots apiece. They have the armor to take hits, the flames to burn out nests. Clever use of terrain and smoke can make your approach a little bit easier, but that's going to be gameplay and tactics and your capability to read a table. 18 shots with all three if they get up next to pack front or an infantry unit. They still have the 3 plus remount, but their assault stats are worse because they're basically towing a bomb and they don't want enemies getting close enough to detonate that bomb. The main thing with the flame is that it's firepower auto and forces your opponent to re-roll their saves if it's an infantry or an unarmored gun uh, infantry gun team or unarmored tank team so if those churchills get within six inches of a pack front you're rolling your five to hit then your opponent's taking their four plus save with a re-roll they fail that re-roll it's dead the nest re-roll firepower does not matter against a flamethrower because the flamethrower's firepower is auto. They're just a natural deterrent to the pack front. And the other thing on why I like the crocodiles is because they have the same capability to deal with infantry that are either A, dug in on an objective when you're trying to clear an objective, or B, infantry in houses. You roll the crocodiles up to that and they shred infantry. Again, granted you need the hit, but you get that hit roll and infantry stance are going to start falling. And with 18 shots across three of them, the infantry are going to start falling. You have two gray box options to take these, so you can take six of them if you really want to get spicy. Granted, negatives being it's a support option, so it's not part of a formation. If your formation broke, it's going, they're going to run, but that's where the cheap desert rats infantry comes in, making it so that it's easier for you to stay on the table. So the crocodiles, seven points a pop for those monsters. That's uh, that's pretty good. The other support option that I'm going to look at is going to be uh, fulfilling the AT-14 role. British have M10 SP anti-tank troops. It's a lend-lease M10 anti-tank destroyer, American-designed. And the one that I'm going to be looking at is not the 3-inch gun. No, the, the Brits mounted 17-pounders in these, which makes an AT-14, firepower 3+, 40-inch range. 
but maybe it's less range. 36 inch range. My apologies. It is four inches less than, than the 88s. But the main thing with this is AT14. You have two gray box options and it is 18 points for four of them. Absolutely nasty. The only real downside to these is that they're front armor 5 and side, side armor 2. They do have the careful hit on rating and they're top armor 0 because they're open topped. So really the only way to reliably use these is ambush. And then that's having an understanding of ambushing working within the main game mechanics. So that you can consistently pop 4 of these M10s and dump eight AT-14 shots into a unit. And so then that just goes into why the medium tanks aren't really meta. You take a platoon of five late war Shermans with front armor seven against AT-14. That's eight shots to hit, followed by how many ever firepowers. AT-14 shreds, and the British are able to field eight of them if need be. And then they also have the option to field a 17-pounder, guns on turntables, but I, I, I like the M10s a little bit more. So the only thing you got to be careful with is when they're on the table, they do only have side armor 2 and front armor 5. So they uh, they are very susceptible to anti-tank fire of any sort. Hell, 50 cals can pen the side of a M10. So you got to be careful with that, but man, 18 points to get 4 AT-14 rifles on the field? I'll take it. So that pretty much wraps up my uh, overview of D-Day British. And they are extremely meta-viable. Due to the nature of their book, it allows you to shift through multiple lists and play styles depending on what you're wanting to look at. I didn't go into the armored cars. They have the armored car option with their, I think, Fox and Domaliers. And then they're pretty standardized for armored cars across the board. And the abundance of AT-14 makes them more viable than medium tanks because, again, they have the same save as a medium tank against an AT-14 gun, but they're over uh, half half the cost. But it allows the book, allows you to shift through multiple lists, multiple play styles. You can, you can take a full infantry list, you can take a Churchill list, you can take an armored car list. You, you got options that you can run with. And their support options with the crocodiles and the M10s make it so that they are competitive in the 116th pack front meta. So yeah, that's that's about it, guys. If uh, if you liked this, if you liked a little bit more of a, a freestyle recording instead of doing it in chunks and editing it together, let me know. If you prefer it to be in chunks and edited together, let me know. Always love hearing from you guys. Always love the feedback. I believe our next book that we're going to go through is Bagration Soviet. Or maybe, no, I think I'll do Balch American next, actually, because I've really been enjoying that. And I've been uh, playing a couple games with Paul, trying out different things with that to look at uh, what we what we got capable, what that book's capable of. Uh, but yeah, my Patreon is still up and running. Be sure to check out my link tree in the, uh, in the description of the video below. Uh, it's got access to gives you the links to all my social medias. I've had a recent explosion on my TikTok with a bunch of new followers coming in, so be sure to check that out if you love uh, Flames of War, Team Yankee, World War II history, and uh, Warhammer 40,000 and such. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a GW fanboy when it comes to stuff like that, so I got that content on there as well. So uh, I want to give a big shout-out, though, to my patrons. I want to thank each of you personally for uh, making this possible. Sky, I Like Tanks 24, Polly One Walnuts, and Carter was here. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Your support means the world to me. And I can't wait to keep making content moving forward so I can keep doing stuff like this. Because man, do I love it. And I really hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I do. But until next time, thank you for listening to the Maneuver Meta.